Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock, with yet another package, yep, <laughs> from Bricklink.com. Right, let's make a start. It's quite a big box, this one. I've done quite a lot of orders recently because um, I'm going to be building a lot of new projects. So as a result, ooh, uh, I need, well, a lot of more bricks. So, golly, I'll tip all this out. Well, it's very well packed. A bit of an avalanche. Get rid of the box. And we've got a cardboard thing as well, which presumably has got some stickers in it. So I can get into that. Oh, golly, quite tough plastic, well wrapped. That's a good thing, I suppose. Oh, there we go. So in between here, which is a bit of an old box recycled, very clever. We've got a few sticker sheets. And the first one is Hidden Side and is from the Paranormal Intercept Bus 3000, which is set 70423. And I can't use many of these stickers because they're all too school bussy and all the rest of it. But what I did like was these ones on the bottom, especially this one on the left, because it very much looks like kind of an arcade game that's being played. And I thought if I did want to make some more arcade machines, then uh, it would come in very handy. You could also use that one for an arcade game uh, machine as well. But that seems to be most of the hidden side sets. So um, I've probably already got that one. Uh, but yeah, it could almost be a two screen one or even decoration on the outside of a machine maybe with all these ghosts on you never know i might be able to use those in my ghost scenes as well though so not too bad but that's the main one so i'm very happy to have that and then the other sets or other sticker sheets rather were three of the same one two three and they're all from the uh newbury haunted high school so same range but seven zero four two five uh, and there's quite a few stickers on here as you can see, lots of sort of notice boards and uh, signs for food and for the school and chalkboards and all the rest of it. But the main ones I wanted were these large uh, open mouths with sort of an abyss on the inside. Uh, and they can be used both ways up, presumably. So I can get sort of four different views out of those. Uh, and I wanted them just to be sort of, sort of scary mouths on um, uh, four by six window pane type pieces uh, in my haunted subway because my second subway station is going to be a haunted subway so I think those will be really good at making it look even more spooky uh, with the sort of teeth and the fact that it's using this sort of spring green colour and then hopefully I can get some use out of the other ones I mean there's only so many broken clocks and things you can have in a city but we've got some wooden panels here and so on so Hopefully, I will be able to use some of them. Oh, and there's a nice computer screen as well. So, and a toilet sign and bus sign and all sorts. So, I should be able to use some of those as well. Right, let's get a system going because this is quite a big order. Uh, I, I don't know what the system is for bagging these because they seem a bit random. Sometimes they bag new pieces together and old pieces together. But to be honest, if I've got a mixed set like this, I'll probably just wash them. So, I've got some curved bricks there. Now, what we will see in this order, and possibly some other future orders, quite a lot of dark red bricks, because I'm going to be doing a building in the dark red colour, and it's quite a big building, so we'll see quite a few of those. Uh, and they're relatively expensive uh, because they're less common, uh, and including quite expensive direct from Lego. So I'm trying to get as many of them as I can second hand. And there's a great big bag of 1x2s. And while I've had to make quite so many individual orders... Is because everybody's got, say, that much, but then that's all they've got. So uh, you need to sort of buy out about five different stores in order just to get enough for quite a big building. So that's a, a necessary evil, unfortunately. Uh, this is a blue sort of uh, cabin top for a truck, which is basically a slight remock of one that comes in a, an old train set that I wanted to make. I say remock, it's sort of 90% Legos build and sort of 10% mine, just making it a little bit better. So here's lots of two by plates of different sizes, largely, uh, for the flooring of that big, big building. I've got lots of red bricks as well. Lots of one by twos. One by sixes with a rogue green one in there. 
Now, the way I do this is I, I basically design digitally, as you know, on LDD, and I get about six big designs uh, made for different things all at the same time and upload those wanted lists to uh, BrickLink. And that means that I can buy for all six projects uh, at the same time. So this vendor, for example, might only have, say, 20% of the bricks I need for project A. Uh, so if I bought for each project individually, I'll be doing six uh, orders for each project. But this vendor's probably also got 20% of the bricks for all the other projects I'm doing at the same time. So if I get them all sort of ready to go on the design phase at once, then I can make the most efficient orders possible. So dark red bricks will probably be for a different project from the red ones, from the yellow ones, and all the rest of it. But um, there will be uh, a lot of commonality, but also a lot of difference between them. So we've got all sorts of different plates here, dark red, dark tan, some Technic bricks in here, one by twos, some of these slide um, one by eight modified plates. It's too many to go through individual uses for each one. Got some yellow dish pieces and some blue one by one round plates. Oh, be a lot of cleaning to do on this order. There's an interesting uh, one by four by four uh, window frame, which takes this sort of um, what they call like sort of flappy door type thing. And I've got some one by four arches in dark red as well for that building which is going to be quite a sort of traditional styled building. And I thought the really sort of dark red would represent some really sort of old brickwork. Uh, and I will use some of the uh, brick pieces. So there's a lot of one by one by fives in there. I will use a lot of the profile brick uh, bricks, uh, which I might even have in this order. I'm not sure. Here's even more, but they aren't profile ones. Um, to sort of accentuate that brickwork. But I didn't want to do the whole thing in those bricks not because they're too expensive, but just because it just looks too bricky then. If you have a huge building made out of the same type of profile brick, it just looks a bit too much, if you ask me. So one by two by twos, one by one by fives, and one by ones. I've got loads of red bricks here. So you can imagine just how big this building is. It's gonna be something that I'll be doing over probably about six um, different um, videos. And that's because it's incredibly complicated, really. It's actually got more pieces than Fast Food Corner in it, even though it's got a smaller footprint, probably 16 by 32. Um, but it's incredibly big and incredibly complicated. It's, it's going to be absolutely great, I'm sure. Ah, now here's some interesting ones. We have got these before, but I'm becoming a great big fan of these, so I buy them whenever I see them. These are Hero Factory pieces uh, from uh, a beastie called Corroda. And you usually get them in sixes because I think he had six legs. Anyway, so you can imagine a great big sort of monster going along on these legs. But as I've said before, what I'm going to use them for is some underwater scenes. So I'm going to have these sort of plant pieces sort of in clumps, maybe clumps of three or something like that. And I think even though it's quite angular, it kind of looks quite organic as well. So two more clumps of those. And I need big sea pieces like this because it's all very well having loads of little plants that are kind of this big but if you're going to have a scene that's going to be sort of four by five base plates potentially underwater it's going to need some really big plants and probably big features bigger than this even just to really sort of uh, you know make it look full up because uh, if you just have a carpet of very small plants on it it's just not going to work so I'm very keen on getting these and even more of them as well. Right, loads of one by two plates, light grey, dark grey and black. A couple of modified ones in there as well. So I think those ones are part of my new subway train as well. I've got one black pane, which is actually going to be one of the panes taking these stickers. I mean, arguably, the sticker's so big, you could probably just stick it on a um, clear piece of glass and it wouldn't really make any difference, but I bought a black one nonetheless. Uh, three pink round two by two bricks. Now these are quite a lovely color, I think. Um, and I thought I'd use these for some cargo, for some sort of chemical barrels. Um, obviously with a top and a bottom on as well, but just, uh, to sort of show the horrible goo inside. So I'll be getting some more of those hopefully, but they're not that common. 
Uh, ooh, one by three bricks. Lots of these one by two with the bar on in that bag. Now, oh, here's something else interesting. I'll put these to one side so they don't get overly scratched, but they're more of these roof pieces. Well, that's what I'm using them for anyway. They're kind of roof cot pit pieces or just slopes. I mean, they're, they're called three by six slopes, um, but I'm going to be using these for a big glass roof, sort of in pairs like that. Lots and lots of skylights, so I need quite a lot of them. So here's another six. I've also used them in the past on my observation car. Let's pop them to one side. Profile bricks on the Palisade style, but in light grey. Great big bag of tan 2x6s. What's this one? Green 1x1 one one cones. I think I bought these for under the sea, actually. I think they were really cheap. I think they were about a penny each or something. And I thought, oh, I bet I can incorporate those into a plant. So um, either a plant in their own right or just to hold something else up kind of above the surface or onto a rock or something like that. One by two plates. I'm going to be using a lot of these with these to kind of make window ledges um, to then have kind of a window in the middle. So that will be happening in due course. Got to decide which order to do all these new builds in. Couple of wedge plates, blue plates, a lot of assorted bricks, all different colours. I'm mixing all together that I'm going to have to sort later. But I do keep a record on all these wanted lists of exactly which part is for which project. So when I get a bag like this, I can quickly find out which goes into which. And then I, after washing it all, I'll put it into bags for each project. And then by the time that uh, project sort of bag or box is full and got all the pieces for that project, then I can go ahead and build it. So that's my system. Not sure it's the best, but um, <laughs> it works. So there's loads of smaller plates in light grey, red, dark grey. Yeah, I'm going to empty these as well. So there's red one by one round plates as well. Stack of those. Uh, yeah, they're for something secret. They're for the same secret thing and an orange uh, that I've been buying a lot of these one by one uh, plates for. Unfortunately, you won't see that this uh, this uh, that soon, really, because um, unfortunately, the project, the secret project, that all these little tiny bits for isn't actually finished uh, the design phase yet. So I'm probably going to be doing all my uh, ones that I've finished the design on first. But hey ho, it's good fun for you to speculate. Wow, look at this bag. So these are two snowboards. And they're quite rare, these two. They're very hard to find. And they're the really heavy type. So they aren't the sort of normal minifigure type, which are a lot thinner than this and very light uh, and, and shorter and smaller as well. These are the bigger heavy ones. And that's because they were used um, kind of on downhill slopes with a minifigure attached. And the weight would enable them to sort of uh, bomb down the slope of the course that you uh, had created. So I collect all snowboards on the normal scale, but I've kind of expanded that to include these just because I really like their pattern uh, and maybe I can incorporate them into my um, snow sports shop uh, I've got the Yeti uh, on the roof of that as the sort of 3D sign but maybe I could incorporate these boards because they're a bit too thick to kind of put in the board racks um, but they're really good uh, patterns this one's got the two sort of minifig faces on tiny little Bit of damage there maybe it's just on the print i'm not sure but um that one is actually from the set 5018 the gravity games promotional set entitled snowboard funnily enough and then the other one which is white and blue obviously a bit grubby but uh, it'll clean up it's white and it's got minifigure on a snowboard type pattern so i really like that one as well that's from 3536 snowboard big air comp from 2003 so those are very good. I don't know, like I say, how I'm going to use those exactly, but um, we'll try. And it's good to, good to just to have. They're so rare, I thought I'd pick them up when I could. So here's loads of little interesting pieces. I've got some uh, more spring green coloured uh, or yellowish green coloured um, teeth pieces. So you can imagine there for my Halloween special that I'm planning. Some round two by two tiles. One of those modified plates. Uh, yeah, that's about that bag. 
tiny stuff in here. Mainly these uh, half length um, Technic pins. I tend to use quite a lot of these. Uh, or I'm always running out of them anyway, so I just thought I'd buy a load to, uh, you know, keep me going. Uh, what else is in here? I've got four of these eye tiles. Now, I had some of these already because they're in most of the um, Hidden Side sets, these tiny little eyes. But I thought I'd get loads more because sort of spring green, this horrible sort of luminous green Halloween type eye, I think, you know, you can't have too many of if you're going to be making scary scenes. So... I'm very glad to have more of those. More plates, one by twos, and those modified bricks with the bar on the side, and what I call headlight bricks, these sort of angular one by ones. They're always useful. They'll be actually part of the very large dot red building. I think the accent color is going to be light gray, as are these arches, which I'm going to have over the windows in a very sort of traditional style. Few slopes, more arches, one by twos in black, and then a few bigger bricks. One by one by five, one by two by fives. Oh, and four of these slopes that I'm going to be using for sort of big computer panels. Just going to be having a, a sticker on those slopes, so that'll be good. And some one by one by threes. So this order isn't as exciting as some of my orders in the fact that a lot of the pieces are very sort of standard, um, but it is very necessary because all these large builds I get through, you know, I need the pieces from somewhere. And if you've looked at my uh, room tour, there's a couple of those, what, two by two tiles with the stud on the middle, kind of like jumper plates. Um, if you've seen my tour video, you'll know that I have a very, very small supply of parts uh, you know, taken back. They're usually just things that I've bought that I haven't been able to use, really. So anything sort of common, like a one by four plate even, I just don't have any usually because I've used them all. And then when I buy them, they're for a specific project. So this mountain of parts is actually probably only good for one or two of my projects, which might sort of last me about a week of videoing. So, you know, I've just got to keep buying, 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 which is where your contributions, and especially my Patreon contributions, come in handy because um, it's a lot of parts. So uh, there's a green door, and there's a lot of these uh, barrier pieces, bar pieces, that I'm going to be using um, probably in my cargo area for my trains. So next door, my trains, I'm going to have a kind of like a yard, not with a siding or anything, because that just takes up too much space, unfortunately. But I'm going to have the overhead cranes and... Um, Loads of pallets and crates and things like that all around. Ah, here's a minifigure. So this is exciting. So this looks very much like a series minifigure of a bat monster, but this isn't the series minifigure because this one's brown. And this is actually from the Monster Fighters range. As you can see, it's pretty much the same. It's the same sort of um, uh, pieces, but different color and different print. So he is also called Bat Monster. And that's from set 9468, Vampire Castle, from 2012. And in fact, there were two of these Bat Monsters in that set. So, uh, yeah, very happy to have him. Oh, he's got good printing on the back as well. In fact, I think his torso might be back to front because that, to me, looks like ab muscles. And that, to me, looks like shoulder blades. So I think... The previous owner of this might have had a more mutated monster than he knew. Ugh. And I think, yeah, I think that looks better. That's probably fixed him. Yeah, that must have been painful. Cool. Anyway, a bat monster. Good. There we go. Another bag. Got some uh, bracket pieces. Some tiny medium azure dots and one mudguard i think it was one short for that truck i was talking about and some more of those brackets yeah it's a very big order this one isn't it lots more plates bigger plates green one gray dark gray dark red black yellow so you can see how many different projects this must be for in that we've got all these different colours represented in the one order. And then we've got some uh, 
of those round topper pieces, which I think I'm going to use for bollards, kind of, uh, you know, to stop uh, vehicles getting where they shouldn't be. Some uh, one by two by three slopes in blue, that's for the truck, and lots of panel pieces. I'm going to have a conveyor belt, and this is going to be the sort of sides of that to stop uh, anything that's supposed to be on the conveyor belt coming off it. More of those Palisade bricks, but in a different bag, so presumably some were new and some were second-hand, but they're all going to the same place. And I was going to do a second bus. I've already done, well, a third bus, really. I've got the tour bus, but that's a Lego set, really. And then I did my own mock bus. Uh, that uses these windows and um, I decided that I was going to do a second one of those and probably make it a double decker so I need lots and lots of these so this is nowhere near enough for the window panels that I need for that and they're a bit used a bit scratched but I should be able to give those a bit of a polish with plastic polish which brings them up usually as good as new ah now here's a very interesting bag lots of good bits so first of all we have a 2 by 2 tile with what looks, I would always think of that as the game called Arkanoid, but that's probably just because uh, that was my first experience of this game. Um, but it's usually a breakout sort of game after the original one, probably back in the 60s or 70s, 70s? No, probably 70s, wouldn't it? Uh, but this is from the Ghostbusters Firehouse HQ, 75827. Uh, and again, I'm going to use this as a either a console game or maybe um, an arcade game in an arcade. I know I've got an arcade, and I know it's full, but there's just so many good ideas for uh, gaming machines that I kind of want to do some more. So maybe I'll just have some, I don't know, next to another building or, you know, next to the diner or something like that. But that is a great piece from a, well, quite big set. So this is quite rare because, it, you know, expensive sets don't usually get parted out uh, in stickers like this. So um, it's the uh, first time I've seen that. So I'm very glad to have it. Another very important tile, this 2x2 two two subway tile. I need lots of those because I use two on every subway entrance and I'm planning about six, I think, for my whole city. Uh, so this is only from one set, 10669 Turtle Lair, which is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle set. So that's that. Uh, oh, so a Lego set. So you've seen lots of these, no doubt. I was actually looking at mine because I'm going to be doing my cargo area soon. And I noticed that I was actually short two of these i've got all sorts of different ones because there's about 10 different ones of these but i didn't have this specific one weirdly uh, and that's because it only came with one set which was the uh, lego city truck 3221 which is a set i never had and i never had that set because that truck is massive <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous it's longer than the base plate by the way it just wouldn't fit in my city very well let alone go round corners on the road base plates so no idea how anyone uses it at all, really. Uh, this is a 2x2 two two, uh, Doctor Inferno tile. And that is in very bad condition. I don't know how it's managed to get to that colour. Usually it's bright yellow and bright orange. It's incredibly faded. Oh, it must be sun damage. I have no idea. That's not going to go very well next to my other ones at all, which is a shame. But, uh, yeah, I might just have to ditch that and keep the uh, tile underneath because that is... Not in a great condition, but, you know, it's a very minor part of the hall. Uh, there's a map piece. I'm getting a few of these just so I can have maps around the city. I haven't worked out how or where yet, but, I mean, they look quite good, don't they? Then we've got a skateboard in green. Now, this is actually the older type of skateboard. You can see it's slightly different. It's got these slightly different connectors, and instead of the trolley wheels, it's got kind of these thicker wheels. They're called mag wheels. Um, I don't know if that's a skateboarding term or not. I know nothing about skateboarding. But um, anyway, it's a slightly different look to a skateboard, so I'm going to get as much variety as I can because uh, I'm thinking of having a skate shop uh, and I'm definitely going to have a skate park. So uh, this is great. And you don't often get these boards anyway in uh, green. So that's good to have. So this was from 5015, uh, a set called Skater with Skateboard Bill in it. Uh, yeah, and, and it was the only one that this particular one came in green. So, yeah, I'm very happy to have that just for variety. So that's nice to have. So this is a nice little fun bag. I've got a couple of those shoe pieces in blue. Uh, a couple of these tiny pieces in trans uh, neon yellow. 
And trans neon yellow is great because it uh, kind of reflects UV light, which makes it extra neony. Uh, it's quite hard to get these pieces in, but I'm going to get quite a few of them where I can. <laughs> There's only two in this whole order um, to make my uh, Halloween scene even more exciting. A couple of those pipe pieces in grey. I've not had those in grey before. I've definitely had these before. Loads more of these line dinosaur tails I'm going to use for undersea plants. Just kind of a great big forest. It'll look like somebody's sort of lime haircut. Uh, and then a little sort of corrugated pipe piece, which I've got one of. I need another. So that's good. And I think we're virtually there. Yeah, final bag. It's got friends pieces in and a tile. So I've got um, a two by four tile in this color because I've got a second set of the Shrimp Shack stickers from Hidden Side as well. And, and this is the color of tile that that sign is on for the one that's on the store. So I thought I'd do the second one on the same background and I can either use it on the back of the store uh, or the diner rather, or somewhere else. But I thought it was important to have the signs on the same background. So that's what that is. But loads more of these star pieces. I can use under the sea as a little starfish or as daffodils, which I still haven't got in my city. I must do that. I was going to do a load of daffodils all around my um, mini golf course. The reason I haven't is because I'm going to be building the cargo yard opposite that and then the uh, skate park even near that as well. And you just don't know where you're going to be able to put flowers to have to move them later, but there's loads of those. And they're actually in the yellow. They're usually in the... Um, orangey yellow but it's good to have a combination because I think that reflects daffodils more accurately and then these are the trolley wheels that go on skateboards but these two are purple so if I'm going to have a skateboard shop I'm going to need loads of spare wheels for sale for when you need to upgrade or replace your own ones so an absolutely massive mound of lovely lovely lego here uh, not so many special or unique pieces this time but quite a few some of which are now completely buried um, are very interesting and it is important that we get all these pieces so we can do all of our wonderful builds in the future but this bat monster is definitely one of my favorites in this haul and I'm certain I've got the uh, yeah I've definitely got the torso on the right way around now I think so um, he can be either part of the haunting of my uh, second subway station or maybe in some other dark alley with no doubt a monster hunter in close pursuit so uh, yeah a really good haul. Well, in all that excitement, we missed the bag. And it looks like quite an exciting, important bag as well. So I've got a few of these headdresses, which were kind of uh, part of uh, a lot of the Islander sets back in the 90s, like 6278 Enchanted Island. And they were the sort of Islanders feather decorative headdresses. Got the focus right. There we go. So I've got a few of those. I've also got a couple, if I can get them both out, well here's one anyway, of these anglerfish. Now these were actually helmets for um, the Lego Ninjago movie characters, the Shark Army Angler. Uh, and I thought I would just use these as actual fish because I mean it's got the tail fin, it's got the dorsal fin, it's got the pectoral fins on each side. It's a bit out of proportion, but if I just stick a black minifigure head in there so it just looks like a black mouth then I can have this fish swimming around my underwater scene and as I say I've got two of those so that will make it even easier to spot one of because they're quite small and in a great big scene you can see they're quite hard to pick out in this big pile of pieces then I've got a couple of heads only two this time so a very small totem pole indeed so the top one there is actually from a series minifigure from the Space Miner in Series 12. I don't have that one because I just thought, how could I use a Space Miner? But I do like his smiling head with the nice sort of um, headset. And then underneath that, with the sort of quirky moustache and the raised eyebrow, both one-sided, uh, that is from a character called Flintlock from Ninjago, which I know nothing about, but um, it's from set 70594, The Lighthouse Siege, amongst others. So they're nice faces to have. I'll have to use those in nice scenes. Uh, I've got a couple of these sacks in dark brown. I kind of think they look like refuse sacks or bin bags. So I thought they would be quite fun, sort of maybe out the back of restaurants, um, you know, for the 
for the rubbish men to pick up. There's another one of those headdresses. And then I've got some flowers from friends. So I've got more of these, what I think are clematis flowers in this purple with a sort of frilly edge. And I've been using those on the climbing plant up the side of my hospital, but I could definitely add more flowers to that to make it even more pretty. So I'll probably do that. And then I've got two of these, what's got to be medium azure, I suppose, or maybe it's not, maybe it's a slightly different color, but nonetheless, these sort of light blue five petaled flowers, which I haven't got any of yet. So uh, I've <laughs> clearly started collecting a new flower there as well. But um, very interesting. So I'll tip those on the heap, get rid of the bag. And I do believe that is definitely it this time. Right, so as always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome Lego videos as well. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be back in Brick Nottingham for another Lego City update. See you then.